Hi, this is uh, another part of my road test for the uh, from Element 14 for the Zybo Z7, the Digilent Zybo Z7. Uh, this is the 10, so it's missing the PMOD, and then some of the specs are kind of less than the 20. But it is uh, does uh, have quite a bit of stuff on here. There's a bunch of buttons. There's switches. There's the PMOD connectors. It does have an Ethernet connection. It's got um, it has. Uh, HDMI in and out. I believe that's how that works. Power, USB, all sorts of good stuff. Power switch. Um, and so uh, I've done some exercises with this. And right now, what I'm going to show is I've gone through the the Peta Linux um, config for this that that I found on the Digilent website. Uh, let me get rid of that dude. So. Um, that's over here in the right hand side so this is from uh, the Digilink github repository um, this is the Pet uh, Linux Zybo uh, Z710 I think there's one for the 20 as well and uh, so this they have bundled up the the Pet Linux which is the Linux uh, the, the, the Xilinx kind of version of Linux with the board support package and all that good stuff uh, for this particular board um, so and it's built for 2017.4 now that was a bit of a challenge because uh, I have 19 installed in one place I got a VM that already had 18 where I have most of my licenses from previous stuff and then uh, I'm having to keep extending the device for my VM because I keep having to add stuff so right now all I've added was uh, the pedal Linux as well as the SDK um, for uh, Vibato 2017.4 to get through this. I tried this with 2018.3. I had a lot of problems. I didn't go back. Uh, I had problems with this as well. You keep, you can run into this Java error, which is kind of weird. And I found some areas where they explain how to possibly get rid of that. The end result ended up being uh, the VM that I had only had one CPU. I went ahead and added four to that VM four cores. I have an eight core processor and uh, after doing that it built. I had no problem. Everything seemed to work fine after that. So uh, at their GitHub repo here for the Petal Linux Z710 they do explain a bit about the the BSP the board support package uh, features um, what they have inside here. They have some drivers SSH. So they bundled some stuff typically find in you know, maybe a Ubuntu or Raspbian that you would find on a uh, on a Raspberry Pi or something like that. So um, this was a bit of a challenge. Um, there were outside of the VM issue with the minimum cores because it launches a bunch of threads when it does a build. Um, I, I was able to, to finally get through it. So yeah, so they have Ethernet. Um, then there's a quick start guide inside here. Um, they do describe how to install this. You know it's needed, and the tools, um, and then how to get Petalinux on your system. I didn't follow this to the T because I put Petalinux in another place, um, but I did have to download it. It's like seven gig to download it. Then it takes up some other space. Um, and then you have to do the source. Now when you do this you have to make sure you do the source for the right version that you have. Since I have two versions and I had I was working with 2018 earlier I found I had to reboot the system to clear out the settings because it kept trying to grab 2018. Um, and then uh, so they tell you how to get this and then uh, to generate the project so you do a create. Uh, when you do do, do this uh, if you go to one of the releases here, let's go up to that, maybe. Don't know if that's showing. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, so if you go to a release, you end up with the board support package, and there's some source code and stuff that's already packaged. Uh, basically, all you needed, at least as far as I, I, I did, all I needed was the board support package. I downloaded that and then uh, went through the went through the configuration, went through all this. So you'll do this project. You can add a name to your project as well. And then the source to the board support package. And then it also explains how to, to run through the pre-built image on the SDK. 
Um, and you copy, you have to have a SD, so I got a micro SD card. I'm using a 32 gig Samsung. I had to blow away the partition, the original partition on it before doing this, and then you partition it with two different partitions, one for the boot.bin and the image, and then the other for, for actual the file system that goes in here, so I there. So um, if you go through all this, as I did with 17.4, seems to work. I haven't tried to go back to 18 since I've added more uh, cores to my VM, but uh, it's working. Um, there's some other things they, they, they mention inside here. Um, there's this user.dtsi file where you can have a specific configuration and information. Uh, mainly what they end up doing is you, you created a UART. Because, uh, you tell, so you're telling it to boot the SD card rather than boot uh, the flash. Um, and then uh, some environment variable stuff. And then they tell you how to go about uh, putting that in there, you did the resize on it, and you're off and running. Insert it into the Zybo, and then uh, you have to run mi Minicom. Well, I'm doing it from the VM. I can run Minicom, but you can pretty much do anything. So, uh, they also how to clean it up. So, that's kind of what I've done with that. Let me go bring back the image of that. So, there's the board right now, it's off. Um, and, uh, so I got my VM over here. Also with this, um, there's also this Digilent apps. So they have some pre-built apps. Um, some of these are already done, like the PWM demo is already added by default. But they have all these demos inside here for how to talk with the board through Petalinux and stuff. So they've already added these. They're kind of there. Um, but they also talk about how you can add this uh, to your environment if you don't already have it. There's some walkthrough as far as the code, um, how to go ahead and, and build this. And uh, I can show you this real quick. So in order to get these, uh, get this aside. Yeah, so they'll end up being under the project spec, the meta user recipe apps digital apps and they were already there when I did this so those are there um, but if you run this command let's see if this works it should come up it's probably gonna write over my config but that's okay I've actually gone and, and added more to this oh well it failed oh well quite sure what that is um, yeah this has been the issue let me see if I just do that I don't know if that does any make I don't know if that's gonna make any difference um, probably because I already built this I don't know if that's causing a problem uh, yeah no it just doesn't want to come up okay well, I'm not going to bother with that right now. Um, I know it's working, and I've already gone through this. And you config project. Oh, I failed to config. Not a clue, man. Um, I think. So this is kind of an aside anyways, I'll have to go through this. I was going to kind of go through this in, in another way, but uh, so I've already kind of gone through this process. I don't know why it's not working now. Um, I've already shut, I already, I shut down everything and it brought it back. I don't, I don't know if that's a problem, but it's already up and running. So I'm going to create, bring this up right here. Um, so I have this connected to a Windows box, which is running virtual box, which I'm running this sent 7.6 virtual machine and so it's kind of kooky since it's going to be come up so 
once I power this on, um, I should get a device up here on the USB for the Digilent. Then I should be able to run. Uh, I forgot to do this as sudo. Right. And so it's basically already up. And what I can do is I can run, let's see, do a restart. I can do a restart on it. You can see the boot process. So it should reboot. Um, it has the Mac. So it, you saw it, it did the Mac and it created a, it picked up an IP address. It's going through the, the file systems and booting up. Um, yeah, some other things inside there. So that's about how fast as it goes up. And then uh, we can actually bring up another window here. Another one, I think. No. Well, I can do it from here. So if I SSH, uh, the default is root. Not quite sure. That'll work. I don't know what the default root password is, but I added mine. So I just SSH'd. Um, I have it connected to Ethernet ports going through kind of a hub um, on my network, and I, I can reach it from my other systems, but my VM can reach it, so that's kind of interesting. Yeah, so I was able to SSH inside there. And uh, so uh, I think that stuff is in like this. Class. It maybe. Oh well. Uh, I know that stuff is somewhere, but based on the other stuff that went through with the digital demos and stuff like that, there should be a PW1 demo. Demo. Oh, PWM demo. And so if you run this, this was based on that stuff that got added. It should go ahead and uh, you see the LED start to change colors over here. So that's one of the demos that they already pre-installed Petalinux for you. And uh, so that's running on the Zybo from the ARM processor side with the Linux stuff. And there's some IP involved with this too. So it is going through the programmable, programmable logic area um, for the PWM. So, um, there's that. Uh, so it's up and running for Petalinux. Um, I'll try to make another video to see if maybe I can walk through, uh, the stuff that I had to do, but, uh, it was, it, it took some, a little bit of effort once I figured out what the heck was going on with my, my VM with the minimal core. So I think the minimum number of uh, processors on a VM should be four. I think they are looking at eight for like complete system. Um, but I think on a VM it should be okay with four. So uh, that's uh, kind of got to a demo. So that's to the PDA PWM demo from the Digilent apps on the Zybo using Petalinux. And uh, that's pretty much it. Um, I hadn't clicked on the other ones. That was what I was trying to show with the config. Um, that you should be able to go back and add more of those demos into the config. Uh, this one is there by default. I think there's a GPI, GPIO one. I'm not quite sure what to do with that. And so I'm still digging through that. So still have a few more things to do with um, trying to do some XF OpenCV, some uh, vision stuff, and uh, we'll see what happens with that. I do have the camera. And then we'll, we'll have to play with that. I've actually changed the lens to a wide angle lens on the camera. So that should help. So there you go. There's uh, Petalinux running with the Digilent apps and a demo for the PWM on a LED. There you go.